so hello, Ten Ton Hammer people. Um, I'm sitting here at SOE Live with uh, the one and only Matt Higby. Say hello, Matt. Hello, Matt. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so um, obviously we're talking about Planet Side 2. Um, so we thought we'd talk a little bit about esports, like what some of the plans are around that. Um, you guys obviously have some big stuff going on with MLG. Um, do you maybe want to kind of uh, give a little preface of what uh, you're aiming to do with some of that stuff? Sure. Um, Planet Side 2, at its heart, is a competitive PvP game. Um, esports are sort of the pinnacle of competitive PvP games. So for us, being able to bring Planetside 2 to the esports world has sort of always been a goal. We know that we have a game that um, has a very interesting viewership experience. It, it has a viewership experience that's unrivaled in terms of scope and scale and all those kinds of things, and it can be very entertaining to watch. Um, and so those are the hallmarks of a, of a competitive esport, I think. Good viewership experience, uh, actually competitive game. So for us, it, it feels like a fit. I think a lot of people look at Planet Side and they scratch their head when they talk about it being an eSport because it looks so different than any other eSport. The idea of 96 people competing in a match, because we're doing 48 on 48, um, is kind of mind-boggling to people. And it's mind-boggling to us too. I mean, there's a lot of logistical issues that we're working through on how you actually make that work. Um, but just the idea of having this larger scale FPS game where you have a a game that does have individual skill, that does have Twitch skill, making a huge difference, but also where strategy and teamwork matter. Um, teamwork is really going to be the thing that separates the best players or the best outfits from the from the other ones in uh, in our eSport mode because teamwork is basically what Planet Side 2 at its core is all about. You could be the best shooter player in the entire world and not be successful if you're not working as a team. Um, so while it might not... Sorry, sorry like ramble. While it might not look like... A, like what people are used to seeing in an eSport, we think that it can create a really compelling and interesting viewership experience. Just like tennis doesn't look like NASCAR, doesn't look like swimming, doesn't look like, uh, you know, luging. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they all have competition. They're similar in that way. They're about people being able to compete to be the best. And that's what Planet Side 2 will be too. It's going to be a team sport. It's not going to be an individual sport. So that's very different than a lot of eSports. That makes sense. Um, and... Just to sort of clarify about some of the changes, because obviously, you know, the, the live game, it's um, open world, and you've got uh, the three factions and everything else. So how will the factional uh, component of Planet Side actually fit into the eSport mode? Um, it'll, be, it'll be pretty incidental, actually. Um, one of the things that we're building to make eSports work is the ability for an empire to be able to fight against an outfit on the same empire. Um, and I think one thing that's really important to note whenever we're talking about this esports stuff is the way that we're approaching developing this. We're not trying to rush and get it done right now. We're not saying, okay, forego all the other work that's being done on the game to get esports in. It's not something that we're trying to like jump into head first. Uh, it's something that we've looked at. How can we develop features that our players are asking for? How can we develop things that our players want? while at the same time making sure that those things facilitate us being able to create an esport out of it. So the perfect example of that is um, Nexus, our battle island. It is designed to be a, a really tight, competitive FPS map, but at the same time, it's designed to fit into our intercontinental gameplay. So if you're an MMO player and you play on the MMO, the MMO uh, planet side game, you're not interested in the eSport instance thing. You're not even in an outfit. You're still getting a massive benefit out of Nexus being there because now we, we can use those battle islands to connect our uh, continents together and create this intercontinental conquest that players have been asking for so much. Another example is... Um, all of your ability as an outfit to be able to participate in our esports is going to be based on your outfit's accomplishments within the MMO game. So rather than creating a system where we have our most competitive, most engaged players off in some queue to play in an instance mode, they're actually going to be highly incentivized to make sure that the competitive nature of the MMO game itself remains really, really high and that their outfit is very active and participating in making sure that their empire is successful and the other players on their empire are successful. That's going to be how you actually are qualified to be able to participate in that. So Again, all of this goes back to us wanting to make sure that we're putting our MMO game first, but allowing this avenue for players who want to have that competitive side to be able to do it without draining them out of the game itself. You brought up a, a good point earlier um, in terms of accessibility in the core MMO and everything else, and that you're kind of expanding out some of the tutorial to, to ease some of the... It's not like there's a huge learning curve, but in terms of you know the chaos that can be going on at any given time in the game, it's a little daunting at first yeah. to know where to jump in and how to contribute. Yeah. Um, do you anticipate you'll be doing some, um, like with the esports component, will you do a little bit um, in terms of like tutorializing that to get people 
Because um, esports, once you slap an even more competitive label on something, it's even more daunting to a lot of players. Yeah. Um, so is that something you're planning on doing to help ease sort of the, a little bit of the transition there? Um, not exactly. We, we do have plans to actually ease the transition, but like specifically for what you're talking about, the way that our esport is going to work, I kind of just touched on, is it's going to be based on you being in an outfit. The best way for you to learn the game and figure out what to do and where to go and how to play is to be in an outfit because there's going to be people that you're playing with, that you're forming friendships with, that you're going to understand how to play with and how to, um, how to utilize what skills they have, like what you know, certifications they have, all that sort of stuff, what roles they're good at. Um, and then they'll be able to kind of teach you as well. As a new player coming into the game, if you're confused, the best thing you can do is join an outfit. So these players who are already in the esports mode, the competitive side of things, they're already going to be in an outfit, so it's probably less... Uh, uh, imperative for us to try to teach those guys how to play the game. And anybody who's jumping into planet side, first and foremost, because they want to participate in esports and they want to be part of the, uh, uh, they want to be part of the competitive side of the game. Maybe they've never played planet side before, but they heard, hey, it's going to be an esport now. I really want to go play that. They're going to join an outfit, and that outfit's going to teach them how to play planet side competitively. Or maybe they'll form their own outfit and learn uh, together. But the the best learning tool is just being in an outfit and being with players who kind of know what they're doing. Um, but we are building a lot of different systems to try to help contextualize some of the things in the game. One of the systems that we're working on right now is called the Mission System. It's designed with several different kind of uh, goals in mind, but the biggest one is to help get people who are new to the game and don't really understand what's going on connected with players that really do understand what's going on, like leaders in, in, in the game. So if I'm a platoon leader, I can say, I need tank support at this location. If I'm just a new player and I'm jumping in and I love driving tanks and I really want to drive tanks right now, I can open my map, look for tank missions, and say, oh, look, there's just a place where I can go be useful right now. Players are asking for me to go drive my tank and do my thing right here. So that helps connect the player community uh, in a very real way and helps people be able to find places where they're useful and hopefully contextualizes some of the confusing, massive um, learning curve that we definitely know is a problem with the game. So it's not going to be the Planet Side 2 equivalent of like Kill 10 Rats, so it'll be like Kill 10 Vanu quests? Yeah, I mean, it's not even like a questing system at all. It's very much a player-driven, almost like a uh, incentivized waypoint system. So you can kind of create a waypoint that says, I need a galaxy pickup here. And then that has a specific type of filter associated with it. If I'm a galaxy pilot on my map, I can look at what missions are available. I can select, I only want to see galaxy ones, uh, Reaver ones, and Liberator ones. I just want to be flying today. And I could just see all those missions, and when a mission like pops up someplace, I can say, oh, crap, they need a Liberator over here. Great, I'll go jump my, my Liberator and, and go help out. Um, it, there's not like a kill, kill 20 Vanus with a Liberator in this location, but what happens is while you're doing things with the Liberator within the mission zone, you just get bonus XP on top of it for doing it. So there's, there's an incentivization there, but it's not based on a quota. Because that sucks. I mean, maybe the guys moved on and there's nobody to kill over there. And you killed nine guys, but you didn't kill the tenth dude and you didn't get the reward. So we wanted to just be based on, on an ambient reward that you're getting for participating in that activity in that location. Similar to the way the alert bonuses work. When you're fighting in a biolab alert, if you're at a biolab, you get 20% bonus XP. Missions will be similar. Very cool. Um, so in North America, you're going to be working with MLG, uh, correct? Um, do you have anybody that you're going to be working with like for Europe or um, other territories at this point? Um, we don't have anything locked down uh, for other territories yet, but we have talked to a couple different groups. For sure. Yeah, I mean, our European community is really large. There's some of the best outfits in the game are in Europe, so we definitely don't want to leave them out of uh, being able to participate in this kind of stuff. But at the same time, um, while travel costs might be daunting, there's no rule against players being able to come from, from Europe to be able to participate in MLG events in the U.S. Um, we're the way that we're doing traveling for these is it's not all 48 people in your platoon are going to be like hopping on the airplane to fly there. Uh, like, it would be pretty crazy. I mean, that's the, that's the, you need to have an NFL private jet at that point to be able to like move your, your, your team around, which is kind of goofy, but yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're, we're planning on having five uh, representatives from each one of the outfits come. So you'll have a platoon and you'll have a platoon leader and then four squad leaders will be the ones that are actually there participating. So you know, seeing five people up on an esports stage is, is old hat. Everybody sees that every time they watch Dota or League of Legends. Yeah, speaking of, so uh, is part of your esport mode going to be a, a MOBA? It's going to be the, the Planet Side 2 MOBA? Um, no, not really. Although some MOBA mechanics we've talked about integrating into our esports mode. Um, like I sort of mentioned earlier, this isn't something that we're diving into head first. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of options that we have on the table about how specifically we're going to implement some of the esports stuff. But we have talked about the idea of potentially making... Um, 
making player have, players have item progression in the course of a match. Maybe we have a 45-minute match, and we have a, a greatly accelerated uh, item unlock. So players are actually earning the certs to be able to buy the weapons that they want, unlock the vehicles that they want to get, that kind of thing, um, you know, through the course of the match, which is similar to something like Dota. You select your build, you, you say, this is my strategy, and then there's some drama associated with, man, are they going to be able to get the, the weapons they need in time? These guys are coming, they've farmed more. Um, and we think that that's pretty interesting. And that's one of the uh, implementations that we've talked about doing for the esports matches. Kind of help give some flow to the match and some kind of a progression sense exactly. you know, like they still have. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of a, another out in left field question for you then. Um, that was actually a really good answer for an odd question. but <laughs> <laughs> um, So we've been wondering. So we've seen uh, Planet Side 1 and Planet Side 2. So we've seen both sides now. Okay. When are we going to see the top and the bottom? <laughs> I, I just got it, you see? I got it. Um, when are we going to see the... When are we going to see, what, what was it? When, when are we going to see the top and the bottom? <laughs> is eSports the top or the bottom? How about that? Planet top? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I think that, I think Esimir is very close to the top. Okay. We know that from a, uh, from a continental layout, you notice when you're on Esimir, the, the sun is circumpolar there. It never actually dips below the horizon, right? So it, it must be at the top. So I think you've already seen it. Good answer. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to uh, share about like the esports and where you guys are going with that stuff? <laughs> These guys picked up on it. Uh, I mean, we're really excited about it. I think that it, it's gonna. There's a lot of players who are super stoked about it. Um, we're doing kind of a little informal competition here at SOE Live. It's a squad versus squad competition, um, six players. It's not supposed to be an esport, but I think it will show. Um, how competitive and how highly skilled some of these players are. I know a lot of these dudes that are coming in, um, and I know a lot of them that are from one of their like, super competitive outfits because they kick my ass all the time, um, who I'm very excited about watching, seeing how they, how they do here in this event. And again, I mean, this is a, this is a fun event for people at, here. It's not supposed to be a competitive esport. It's still in the MMO world, and it's six-man squads fighting against six-man squads. Um, for, for points. So, I mean, it, it, it's not representative of the eSport at all, but it should be very representative of the type of competitive play that the eSport will eventually be. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, and yeah, we're looking forward to seeing the rest of what you had to show us this weekend, so should be good stuff. I'm kind of bummed out that we didn't get to show, uh, to show Haas in here, but you guys are going to see it probably before you see this interview. So there. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank <laughs> you.